Hello, this is Max Drake. I just want to talk to you about Auto Hotkey versions 1 and 2 and in VS Code, which is what I use. Now, Auto Hotkey are bringing out a new version 2, but it's actually in beta uh, state at this point in time. But it's not backwards compatible. So if you've got uh, something, a script which is written in Auto Hotkey version 1, you can't run it in version 2. And if you've got something in script in version 2, you can't run it in version 1. Now, um, Tom from Tad Nation goes into the version 2 introduction here. Um, in the first video, he has this really tedious, awkward way of actually uh, getting a script to run inside of version 2 while still running version 1 uh, scripts. In the second video, he has a nice solution where he ends up making the version 2.ahk2 extension uh, to his files. So the file extension, file type extension is that. So what he then does is that inside um, uh, Explorer, you can then assign a program for a file extension type. So he just made version 2 auto hotkey program run the version 2. The other thing with Auto Hotkey version 2 beta, which is out at the moment, is the fact that it um, doesn't install directly onto your computer. It comes as a zip file, so therefore you can choose where to install it. Now, a lot of the, the things seem to be that you install it as a subdirectory of your main one and uh, just looking at other ways of doing it. So I've got the 64 bits, so it's put in my program files under that, under auto hockey, and I've made a subdirectory called version 2 of where I've actually put the other 64 bit and the 30 bit where I've just unzipped the whole thing uh, through here. I also make, took, took a copy of the 64 bit and I just renamed it auto hockey.exe just because I was getting a bit confused with trying to get things working. So now I've got both versions of Auto Hotkey on my computer. I've now reassigned the program as per um, uh, Tom has said there, so that if it's got a dot Auto Hotkey 2 extension, it will run with version 2. So I've now assigned that as per his video through there. So that's one of the things. So in my downloads folder, I actually now have two separate folders. I have one for version 2 and I have one for version 1. Now, because I run auto, uh, I run uh, VS Code over all of this. Inside that subdirectory of where you're running VS Code, it creates a little .VS Code subdirectory, and inside there, there's a, 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 a script called launch.json, which you can go and alter. Now, coming into VS Code, the reason I like VS Code is that not only do I do all the hotkey scripts and stuff like that, I also do a bit of Python or I do a bit of HTML and things like that. And one of the really nice extensions that it has is live service. So when you're doing uh, HTML stuff, you can actually just run it straight away in your browser and, it, and, and you can see what it comes. So I was doing some COVID maps and stuff, and it's brilliant for that. Anyway, there's a, a program called VS Code Debug. An advanced debugging support for auto hotkey, including versions one and versions two. So this one isn't a standalone program. Uh, if we just go into what it is, what it actually says is that you should also um, uh, have in there as well. Um, uh, you'd you'd need the uh, sleeve-esque VS Code for if you're running uh, version 1 and Dude Molesa. You know, it doesn't need to be this one, but that's the most popular one, and Dude Doodle Moser for if you're running version 2. So you've got to add another couple of plugins through there. So I've then added the plugin, which is the sleeve-esque one, and I've added another one, which is the um, Dude Moser one. Now, when I actually had both of those installed and I hadn't actually configured the, 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 the VS Code for this debug, I was either running one version or the other, and it was getting really frustrating because I could actually only run a version 1 or a version 2. But there is a way that you configure it. Now, as I said before, when you actually start running scripts within um, a, a, a version thing, you'll find that inside there it's created this .vs code, and inside the VS code it's got this launch just JSON. Now, inside, so what it does is when it actually comes to read, it then read that configuration and it'll do. So if I've got an auto hockey dot auto hockey, it says, okay, run this executable. And if I'm running this other one here, a .ah2 or a .ahk2 
extension, run this executable, which is in the subdirectory version 2, order hotkey 64 bit, or the order hotkey exe one, whichever. So therefore it knows, when it looks at the extension, which one it's running. So that means I've got to write all of my version 2 with a dot ahk2, which I'm quite happy to do. You know, I want to get, want to transition over into order hotkey 2 and get my head around all of that, because you've got to write those as functions um, away from the other one. So that's fine as far as that goes, but all I want to do is be able to operate both of them. So one of the ones which I've realized when I kept on it, it kept on erroring out is down the bottom here in the debug console, it would tell you what program which was actually running depending on what you were doing. And it would also tell you the file that it was working on. So in here, I just going to now run a uh, one called crosshairs. Now this is a .ahk. So this is a version one program through here. So I normally love using the little arrow here to actually do this. And now if I just go control three, uh, I then get this uh, crosshairs on screen, which is what this um, script is about. So if we look at the bottom here, we say that it's running auto hotkey u64 exe, and it's running the dot auto hotkey extension through there. So that's fantastic. So I'm running a version one program and testing it out through there. So I'm doing the debug through there to see that it works. Now if I come through here, I've got this one calendar.ahk2. And now, it, unfortunately, I haven't got the little arrow, but I've, so I've got to hit the F5 key. And now this says that this program is running version 2 autohotkey.exe, and it's running calendar.ahk2. Now, if I just use Control c on that one there, it pops up the calendar, so that program there is running. So this is just, I've just downloaded a couple of programs that I thought might be interesting, and I haven't uh, looked at the coding or anything through there. I just really wanted the instance set up. And this is something which I found uh, frustrating. When I looked on the forums, there was a lot of people talking about it, and they'd all read, written little scripts that sort of said if it's a version 2, it would go and send you off and do all of this sort of thing. I didn't want any of that. I just wanted to actually have the same environment and be able to do this. Anyway, it took me quite a lot to do. So what you end up having to do is you end up having to do your launch program to actually make your configurations right. So I've now got one for an order hotkey script, and this is one... I, if I didn't have this runtime, I basically I had to build it up from scratch. I've given them both different ports, whether they're a version 2 or a version 1. And then I've also, they've got a different executable based on what their extensions are. And then it also needs this runtime arguments. And I was finding that if I didn't have that in there, it was actually causing an awful lot of grief. So I've now got all of those two running now. So um, uh, I can now do a .ah2, and I don't know if I can do a .ah1, um, but that's now all working. So the code for that is actually in the post that I actually did through here. So this was the post where I talked about doing the setup and the launch JSON files and actually demonstrating how it worked. And so anybody else uh, who's used VS Code with that, that, that yeah, it's a simplistic way of doing it, but it, it works quite well. So um, within the VS2, here's all of these things which you actually need for the debug or what you need to call them and stuff like that. Um, uh, and all I've done is actually just scripting. While I was looking for that, I also came across this little item here. So this is a, a, a part of the forum, and it's doing a from uh, version 1 to version 2 script converter. So it's a work in progress, and there is a GitHub download. So if you actually wanted to link to it, and so you know, just don't do any updates as they actually come along, um, uh, uh, you, you can actually download that one there. So it actually has um, some stuff. Now, a couple of things that... What I've made a decision is that I have two separate directories. I have auto hotkey working for version one. I have auto hotkey version two. And anything I put in auto hotkey version two, I'm going to have the extension dot ahk2. So that means I downloaded this particular uh, file through here. And if I just come back into here, and go and look at the quick convert to. I actually had to, all of it was written with .ahk. Now it's actually written in version two. So therefore you've got to run it in version two. 
which is fine, makes perfect sense really. But I actually had to go through and rename all the extensions. And also it, it doesn't include and calls a library and calls another function as well. And so you've got to create those and make those a version two as well. So just a, a, a point of view of, of transitioning from one to the other. And I think after a while, it's just that from my point of view, I want to carry on writing a whole lot of things, but it seems to make sense to start writing it in version two now. From the point of view of disseminating anything else, I'd most probably put through a header. In fact, I think I've got this header through here, um, uh, which I actually just go, I think it's just called VV2. Um, oh, sorry, there we are. So it's auto, I just said, I just got a, a quick um, auto expander, which just says that this is here. So I should actually put a link through to here, but it was just a test thing. So that if I'm actually quickly doing a bit of things, I've actually just got a little bit of a text expander with my auto um, correct um, to, to actually do that so that um, uh, I can keep those things um, running along quite nicely. So I hadn't done anything really in, in, in version two. I wanted the, the, the environment to be able to working so that it allowed me to do that so I can slowly transition from one to two. And if I give the disseminate the stuff, I'll just compile it so that they can do it, or I'll make sure that uh, I, I think it was Tom who suggested to actually just put this which version it is. I think actually if I was doing that, I, I should put a link through to there, and I should put a link through to the version one just in case people are actually playing with different things as well. So I hope that's been of interest to you. Um, it was something that was rather causing me a bit of a pain and i think that's the thing why i don't use the sky um uh editing environment that i i see other people do like um uh, uh a lot of the videos and things it's just because i i do different things in, in as well like the html stuff and other things as well i just find this such a a nice environment to be i really like the extensions that um, uh, come through in the visual studio code so Thank you very much for watching. If you found it useful, please give a thumbs up. If not, up and your heart.